Now, of course, they say there's two sides to the coin and true intelligence is there on the edge where you can see and understand both sides and make the proper decision for you. Now, in this case, we're talking about the real estate reset that is underway. I titled this video New Homes Crash because we have officially reached bear market territory for the price action on new home prices and sales. Activity is down and the average price that the new home is selling for is down by 19.3%. Now, if you guys are new here, my name is Zach Rector. I cover current events, financial markets, and I'm trying to help as many people as possible get on the right side of the greatest transfer of wealth in world history. The real estate asset class is very important. We all need a roof or some sort of shelter uh, for the family, right? And so this is why we cover it. I just updated and made a new playlist titled Real Estate Reset, where I'm going to be posting all of my real estate updates. So if you guys want to catch up on the real estate news, you can find that right at my homepage. Just go to the playlist and under the Real Estate Reset playlist, we're going to have all of the real estate updates for you guys. Let me know in the comments down below what you want to hear me talk about next in the real estate asset class but without further ado folks let's get right on into it i'm going to show you the good news right and like i said depending on which side of the coin you're on if you're looking to buy your first time home or you're looking to buy a new home this is music to your ears right price is coming down nearly 20 percent now if you own an existing property uh, or if you're you know maybe a builder who's trying to offload this inventory right uh, you know you're getting desperate trying to offload this inventory trying to move this thing trying to hang on to the equity that's in your home but the good news right is there's an opportunity that presents itself and the other part of this story is the lack of inventory in some of these markets which is driving some markets back up and we're talking up double digits. And so this is why I call it the real estate reset. It's not a crash across the board. Remember in the title there, I put new homes crash, okay? When we look at existing uh, homes, it's a different story. And when we look at some of these neighborhoods and these metros that actually have a lack of inventory, prices are going up. Take a look at it, folks, from Nick Gurley from Reventure Consulting. Home price growth hitting double digits in housing markets with the biggest inventory shortage. We're talking areas like Hartford, Connecticut, Bridgeport, and Trenton, where appreciation is still registering 10% plus year over year, while inventory is down 50% from long-term norms. Until inventory improves, home prices in these markets will keep rising. So there you have it, folks. You got markets here, 12%, 10%, 7%. 10%, 11%, 7%, 7% year over year price growth. This is all primarily in the Northeast where they are experiencing a lack of inventory and suburbs where folks are moving to to get out and escape the cities. Now, in regards to the new home prices, they are down nearly 20%, 19.3%. I know somebody's going to come into the comments and say, how dare you call it a crash? How dare you say it's in bear market territory? It's only 193 it's not the official definition of a bear market at 20%. Well, we'll be there here soon. <clears throat> now, from uh, the 2022 highs, right, we're down nearly 20%. And what's interesting here is that we are falling faster than rates seen in the 2008 financial crisis. That's what really should be concerning, folks. New home prices peaked in late 2022 at 409, uh, 497,000 and have fallen to 401,000 as of the latest data. In the financial crisis, new home prices dropped by 23% from 2007 to 2010, according to ReVenture. So we have nearly completed the move, the total move, right? We're down 19.3. The total move in 2007 to 2010 was 23%. So we're nearly there, but we've done it in about half the time. We are down roughly the same amount in just 1.5 years, half the time compared to the great financial crisis. The pace of this uh, crash in the new home prices is much faster, twice as fast as during the great financial crisis. Still, new home prices are about 20% above pre-pandemic levels and existing home supply is near record lows. Is the housing market beginning to crack? This is a dynamic situation. This is why you got to take this market by market. You got to understand that the famous saying in real estate, right? Location, location, location. This really comes down to zip codes. This comes down to individual streets, right? In particular neighborhoods where you can see, you know, lack of inventory is driving some of these markets up, double digit growth in some markets. 
where we are seeing a flood of new homes come on and we're seeing a flood of inventory in states like Florida where we're having uh, a really a crisis with insurance, um, insurance jumping 50, 100 percent. Some states like California where insurers are just completely leaving, right? And so this is leading to some significant problems and a flood of inventory that's coming online in states like Florida. Uh, and then in new new home uh, areas like uh, Dallas, Fort Worth Metro, other metros within Texas. Uh, we're talking Phoenix, Arizona. We're talking Las Vegas. These are markets where you're seeing prices come down significantly. Uh, across the board and it's primarily being driven by this new inventory that's coming on and flooding the market essentially so um, these are markets where you're seeing existing homes are going down not as much as new homes but a correction is underway by 10 percent or more in markets like phoenix or austin texas okay now let's continue on focusing on the data here new home prices are about to drop below existing home prices for the first time since 2005. the median new home price unexpectedly fell uh, to 400,500 in february down 7.6 percent over the last year and as we just highlighted down nearly 20% from peak. This is the lowest median new home price since June of 2021. Meanwhile, the median existing home price jumped to 384,000 in February. Supply of new homes is at its highest since October 2022, while existing home supply remains historically low. You know something is wrong when new homes are about to be cheaper than old. And this is what's interesting is that you're actually seeing uh, if you look at the Case Shiller Index, which takes the 20 largest metros across the United States and it pulls the existing homes, not new homes, homes that are being resold or already have been you know, pre-owned essentially. When you look at that case shiller index, it's at all time highs, right? So this is where you get talking head pundits on CNBC that are saying that real estate never goes down. Dave Ramsey, who's trying to mock, um, you know, pay, people in the, you know, you know, in the real estate sector that have been warning, right? People that, you know, analyze these markets and have been warning about this correction. You got Dave Ramsey and these guys are cherry picking headlines, trying to say that home prices are at all time highs and that home prices never go down. We just showed you new home prices are down 20% from peak. Okay. And the problem with a lot of these deals, a lot of these folks that bought these were buying this with the assumption that they were, you know, sold by real estate agents of, uh, you know, uh, date the rate and marry the home, you know, and this is a problem that many people are going to find themselves in is they're not going to be able to refinance because they're not going to have any equity, right? If you're buying the homes, these new homes and the prices continue to go down, there's no equity there for you to refinance. Even if rates do come down, I'm not going to argue that fact in this session, even though we've proven and we've shown, and here we are, there hasn't been any rate cuts when they were predicting six last year, seven this year. Now they're coming back down to the reality that we're only going to get maybe two or three. Um, and if we do get those, that's going to be after the system's already broke, that we've already entered a recession. So good luck. Hopefully you have a job, right? And so uh, the date the rate, marry the home advice not working out so far. And I don't think it's going to work out for the foreseeable future. Now, continuing on to hone in and dive into a little bit more on what, what we got here. Are new home prices declining or is the size of a new home just getting smaller? From Eric Bas Magian. Well, it's a little bit of both. Let's look at the data. The median square footage of a new single family home has declined in recent years, falling from 2,335 square feet in 2022 to 2,156 in Q4 of 2023. So we do have homes, new homes becoming smaller. The median sales price of a new single family home has been declining as well, down from 480,000. He's sharing 422. What we just shared with you guys, though, is it's actually down to 401. So it's actually worse than that, okay? Um, this is a back of the envelope method, but if we divide the median sales price of a new single family home by the median square footage of a new square foot home, uh, new single family home, we get a proxy for the price per square foot of a median new home sale. There's been about a 10% reduction in price per square foot. So they are coming down in price and they are coming down in square footage. The median sales price of a new single family home has declined even further in Q1 with prices now down 
20% from peak. Okay, so now he's added in. Okay, right, right. That's because he was pulling from Q4 uh, 2023, where prices had only gone to 422,000. Now he shares the updated data from Q1 from February of this year. We're down 20% from peak as we've been reporting. Some of this decline is due to smaller home sizes, but as the prior chart showed, outright price declines are occurring in the new home market. In conclusion, the new home market has had a month's supply over six for almost two straight years, and new home sales volume have remained depressed. Smaller homes, price cuts, rate buy-downs, and concessions have all been used to move new home inventory. Existing home prices are a different story. And so we actually just got it on Monday. Uh, the activities actually down as well. And this is the tactics that they're using to actually move these inventory, right? They're struggling to move it as shown through the data that came out Monday, existing home sales or sorry, new home sales down as far as activity goes. And then with prices down nearly 20%. And this is all being done with them putting out smaller homes. Now you're starting to see the, you know, whole developments of tiny homes that are being put out, right? Price cuts, rate buy downs, concessions. They're doing everything they can to move this product. Now to wrap up this session, I just wanted to share this point from Danielle DiMartino Booth, the guillotine falls, the sacrifice in the commercial real estate sector. And this is S&P Global Ratings, lowering the outlook on First Commonwealth Financial, m and Bank Corp, Synovus Financial Corp, Trustmark Corp, and Valley National Bank Corp, as five lenders have, quote, some of the highest exposures to commercial real estate loans among banks it rates. And so we're starting to see it's happening here in the residential market where we're seeing pressure. We're seeing a flood of new inventory in some markets, driving price down by over double digits, new home sales down by about 20%. This is bear market, official bear market territory. It's not just me trying to sensationalize it by putting crash in the title. No, this is official bear market crash. Technical definition is being met. But then when we look at the commercial real estate, it is a complete sacrifice. And now we're seeing that it's coming back in here. And we're looking at the balance sheets of these small regional banks. And now they're getting downgraded as well. So they're getting squeezed out, they're getting downgraded, and as we've been warning about, this banking crisis is not over. So it's not just a story of you know residential real estate getting squeezed out a little bit, it's commercial real estate getting really sacrificed, and this is on the balance sheets of these small regional banks who cannot afford to eat it. Now, it's on the balance sheets of Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, and others, but we know that they're systemically important, too big to fail, and so they're going to be chosen by Janet Notel and Yellen to get bailed out, get the get the bailouts, or even get bailed in, right? Depositors bailing out the banks. That's what's coming in the next banking crisis, by the way. Uh, so if you don't hold it, you don't own it. You, you might want to check that. And uh, this is what we've been warning about, right? So as I said at the very beginning, there's two sides to each coin, being able to stand on that edge and see both sides, evaluate the situation and come up with a thesis that's best for you and your family and your business. That's what we're trying to do right here. So although it does pain me to report on our economy going into recession, the amount of job losses that we're now reporting, the real estate prices coming down, I know this is wiping out equity. I know it pains me to warn about the correction that we're seeing in the equities market as well. You know, this is going to be the greatest transfer of wealth in world history without a doubt. How much wealth is going to be transferred? Well, maybe a little bit less than we're anticipating if the correction that we've been talking about actually comes through. Nonetheless, it's an opportunity for those of us that see it coming, can position ourselves perfectly, and it's an opportunity that's going to be absolutely massive. Whether you're looking at real estate, whether you're looking at equities, we talk a lot about the digital asset space. We put this whole thing together encompassing a full investment thesis that has us positioned for all of the asset classes. If you appreciate what we're doing here with the real estate updates, remember, we just did the new real estate uh, playlist called Real Estate Reset. Make sure you guys check that out. I've only dropped a couple of videos in there so far, uh, but we're going to continue to update you guys here on the real estate asset class. If you appreciate the updates, you guys know what to do. I'll see you in the next one. God bless you all. I am your host, Zach Rector. I really appreciate all of the love and support. If you want to support the channel, just remember that you can start by smashing that thumbs up for me, sharing this content far and wide, and everything else is at my website.